Hi guys, it's Caitlin Cahill, the geek you need here. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite text effects. That is really a simple way for you to elevate your text to another level. I'm using Photoshop today because you need to use masks. And so you can do this in any program that allows you to do masks on a layer, which if you don't know what those are, I'll show you. So to begin with, I'm going to go over here to my toolbar and I'm going to get the text tool and I'm going to type out the text that I want. It's obviously way too small, so let's make that bigger. And you can do this with any font, but it tends to work best with fonts that are a little thicker, so you can see the drop shadow and the outline around it. So I've chosen a nice sans serif with a bold print here. So I have my text on one layer, uh, my background color on the other. Now I like to design for dark t-shirts because those sell better. So I'm going to double click on that layer to do a color overlay. Let's make it a black. And then I'm going to change the color of my text to white. All right, so now we're ready to go. So now there is a drop shadow feature. If you double click on a text layer, you can add a drop shadow right within the layer style. But today I'm not going to use that because I want to be able to add negative space as an outline around my text. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. And there's two different ways to do it. I use um, Command J, Control J if you're on a Mac or PC. And that's the shortcut to duplicate a layer. You can also right click on it and select duplicate layer. Name it and if you just keep the document within the same one you're using and then click OK. So now I have two copies of my text. This bottom one is going to be the actual drop shadow and this one's going to, the top one's going to be in the main text. So this bottom one, I'm going to change the color. Do a color overlay. Do a nice pink. Now this warning right here is telling me that because I have my document sent to, set to CMYK, which is what the printers that I use, the color space that they use, this exclamation point is telling me that this pink is outside the range of those colors. So it's suggesting another one that's within the range. So I'm going to click on that. Now this color will be able to be printed by my printer. So click OK. Now that layer you can't see because it's underneath this one is pink. So now to make it a drop shadow, I'm going to make sure my move tool, this four arrow icon up here at the top is selected. And then what I'm going to do is use the arrow keys. Now the arrow keys will move it down essentially one pixel at a time, unless you hold down the shift key at the same time, and that will move it about 10 pixels at a time. So we're going to hold down shift and then press down and then right, down, and then right, down, and then right. So now you can see I have a nice even drop shadow. Now because I'm going to be adding an outline around it, I'm actually going to do that a few more times to make it a little bigger. There we go. So now this is, you know, not bad. It's a drop shadow is a nice effect in and of itself. But I like to add a negative space around the top layer in order to really define the word. So to do that, I'm going to go to my top layer, right click on the T. You can't click on the other part of the layer. You have to do it right on that T and then select pixels. So now you can see that the word is selected. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my select menu, modify, and then expand. And normally I expand it about 20 pixels works for most of the designs that I work on, but you can play around to see what works for you. So now see that actually looks too big. So I'm going to undo that. Go back to select modify. Let's try 15 pixels. That's a little closer to what I want. So now that I have this selection, I'm going to go back to my drop shadow layer, the pink one. And then I'm going to do a layer mask. And so I'm going to go up to my, my menu, go layer, layer mask, 
hide selection. So what that's going to do is it's going to cut out the pixels of that selection. So if I turn off the top layer, you can see it took out all of those pixels in this mask that's now on that layer. So now how you can see there's just this nice negative space. It really defines your top level word. Um, and then you can have your drop shadow below. Now, if I decide that maybe that's too much of a drop shadow, I want to make it a little bit smaller. First, I have to click this link to unlink the mask so that the mask stays the same. So the mask stays placed around the top layer. Click on the T because I just want to move the text, not the mask. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that in a little bit. So then I have a little bit more subtle text shadow there. So this way, no matter what color t-shirt is underneath, so for example, here's black. If I were to add a different color t-shirt, say green, I don't have to change the color of the outline because it's a mask. So this same graphic will work on any color t-shirt and we'll have that same outline around it in whatever the color of the t-shirt is. Now this effect is really great if you want to put text on a solid color graphic and have the drop shadow also be negative space. Let's go ahead, let's add a shape behind it. Let's do a yellow circle. So I'm actually going to delete the current drop shadow I have just to start fresh. So then I have my text layer here. So like before, I'm going to make a copy of that layer. The top one's going to be my text. And this one's my drop shadow. I'm going to go ahead and add a color to that. Now this time, instead of moving it with the shift key, I'm going to do one pixel at a time and you're going to see why. So you'll see just a little bit there. So you can see I have just one pixel of a drop shadow now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that layer and move that one down just one pixel and over. Copy it again. So keep copying, moving down and to the right by one pixel using your arrow keys. And you're going to do that till you have 10 layers of drop shadow. Select all of the drop shadow layers and you're going to merge them together. On a Mac, the shortcut to merge layers is Command E. On a PC, it's Control E. You can also go up to your layer menu and go down to the bottom where it says merge layers and it'll merge all the layers that you have selected. So now you can see all of those little drop shadows are one big drop shadow. So if you wanted to make it even bigger, I could make a copy of that and then use the shift key to move it 10 because it's 10 pixels within a drop shadow layer. So now the 10 works and I have a nice thick drop shadow now. I'm going to merge that layer down again. Now this is actually a cool effect in and of itself. It makes the letters look 3D. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it negative space. So much like we did in the first tutorial with the outline, I'm going to right click on the image preview and click select pixels. And then I'm going to go to my circle layer or whatever layer you want to have the mask on. And then I'm going to go to layer, layer mask, hide selection. So now if I turn off that drop shadow layer, you can see I now have a drop shadow that's negative space around the letter letters. So no matter what t color t-shirt I printed on, that drop shadow will be the color of the t-shirt because there's no, no ink will be deposited there. So now I'm going to show you one more technique that takes that last effect that I did but uses smart objects. And the reason you want to learn this technique is you can do it once and then save it as a template and you can quickly reuse it just by changing the text in one layer. It's really slick. So to begin with I have my text layer. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, before I do anything, is I'm going to right click on that text layer and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. So now I can see that it's a smart object with this icon here. Now I'm going to make a copy of it. 
So now this bottom layer, I'm going to change the color so I know it's the drop shadow layer. And I'm going to move it down and over one pixel, just like we did before. And just like we did before, I'm going to do that um, nine times so I can make a really thick drop shadow. So copy down and over. So now I have this nice thick drop shadow layer. And just because I like to keep my layers organized, I'm going to go ahead and select all those layers. And I'm going to do Command G to group them together into one group. The reason I put that, it not only organizes it nicely, but then you can also apply color overlays to all of those layers at once, which is really effective. So now that I have my text layer, my drop shadow, just like we did before, the nice thing is what I can do now is if I double click on my text layer because it's a smart object, what I can do now is I can use my text tool to change the text and then save this smart object and close out of it. And now you can see that my smart object updated not only this text, but all of the copies of the text. So when you copy a smart object, references the same smart object. And so it's a really easy way to make a reusable template for text effects. So now whenever I want to drop shadow like this, all I have to do is just change the text in my smart object and I'm ready to go. So if I want, I can also now right click on that group. I could merge it. Select those pixels apply my mask, so now whatever color t-shirt it prints on, the drop shadow will have that effect. Thanks for watching! Want to see even more tutorials? Subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos.